All right, everybody, we've got uh, Coach Aranda here for our first uh, weekly presser. So um, as, we can, as we've been doing through the Zoom um, press opportunities during camp, if you can, uh, just raise your hand over on the side, and I will moderate and work our way through. So uh, we'll let John Werner get us started today. Hey, Dave, I'm not used to you behind the podium, but... Uh... I know. Yeah. And we talked about that, about how this is a little bit different, but it's good that we're doing it. It feels like a, yeah. game, a game is getting closer, so... I got gotcha. you. I want to ask you a little bit about how the secondary is developing. Maybe if you could comment specifically on some of the veterans like, uh, you know, Kalon and Raleigh and JT and Christian and guys like that. Yes. So immediately when I think of the secondary, I think of Jalen Petrie. I think of McVay. I think of that star position. Uh, Jaron's really been able to cover well in the slot and be able to do the zone concepts that we want that we want to want for him to execute as well as the man principles and the man coverages that are so dependent upon his technique right so he's covering the slot defender and kind of their go-to guy and so it's it's been um, uh, really exciting to see uh, McVeigh play the way that uh, that he has. And then you've got uh, Petrie that can bring in a blitzing aspect, that can set edges versus the run, that can uh, cover as well. And so I think that combination of, 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 of star um, athlete, I think, enables us to really be um, dynamic and to um, really play into each other's strengths. So I think when I think of the secondary, I start there. Then I think in, the, in, the, in terms of the, the back end, the safety position, um, whether it's, it's JT or Williams, I think a lot of length, a lot of range. Uh, Christian gives us an, an in-the-box safety. I think he's improved with his middle field um, range and coverage and vision. I think that we're still working on improving some more there. Um, you know, the, the thing about the defense is that with the five DBs, you, there is an element of being interchangeable and being positionless. And so... Uh, there are certain strengths, and we start and would like to end in those in those strength spots, but the ability to be uh, kind of nameless and interchangeable in today's game allows quite a, quite a bit of, of offenses that that we face. I think corner wise, the length and whether it's with Mark and Kalen, the length that they have and the speed that they have gives us the ability to press. And I think that's probably a, a change from the past is having that ability. I think uh, Raleigh gives us the ability to, to bail and to play some zone concepts that he has in the past. I think the press is something that um, he's really attacked. I, so encouraged just by his enthusiasm and his um, desire to uh, to learn something new and really improve. And I think he's he's one of my favorite uh, favorite guys to watch. Just his his um, his speed, his excitement, his um, his want, and his his um, ability to grow and learn is very impressive. Riley Tejada. So. There's a lot of positive there. I think uh, our offense has given us a fair amount to uh, to adjust to and to have to to try to cover. And you know, our offensive skill receivers definitely, when there is isolations, they test us. And so, uh, proud with uh, our secondary's improvement. Still, some more improving to do. Thanks, Dave. Yeah. We'll go to Jerry Hill next. Dave, on special teams, uh, maybe kind of what your specific philosophy is, if you, if you have one in that area. And then 12 days out, where do you see that group as far as the kickers and the returners? So with special teams, we want our best players contributing and playing and taking ownership in special teams. And so really proud of Matt uh, Pollage and what he's been able to um, to do there with the time that we've had, what, you know, going back to Zoom meetings and – Matt's, Matt's got some really good catchphrases and, and themes. And, you know, uh, we're starting meetings and breaking meetings with these things. And 
our guys have really taken to it. And, um, you know, it's important. Special teams is. I think it's the it's the, the first play of the game. I think it's, um, you know, for example, if you watch field goal block, and I think when you watch that in on, on Saturday, you watch the effort, you watch the intensity, you watch the intent, that tells you a lot about your team, right? Somebody just scored. Right, and then that fit, that uh, that group's out on the field, and what do they look like? How do they approach this? How do they respond? Right, and so I think all of th that's very much an attitude, and it's it's very much contagious. And I think Matt's done a great job with that. Uh, the second part of your question, uh, I was specifically on you know what what are the kickers li looking like? What are the returners looking like? Are there specific guys that you would like to use in the return game? Yeah, we're still in the process of really trying to, to narrow that down. I think um, these last two scrimmages have been have been good um, have been good glimpses into um, what we want to be. I think uh, this week right here, the, the thought is to continue to get the work that we need, and so that um, going into the week of the twelfth, we um, are settled as much as we can be. But I think um, there's some freshmen that are that are in some of these spots. And we're looking at them. I think it's very open right now in terms of um, who those are. I mean, you know, John Lovett and, and Ebner have been involved. Um, I think they they're bringing some experience to that. But we're looking at everybody to see kind of where this goes, um, not only starting on the 12th, but where it could possibly go throughout the season. Thanks, Dave. Yep. Go to David Smoke. Dave, the uh, special teams part of it that, that's been brought up, there's a special teams that, that makes plays, make a, an average team good and a good team possibly great. That's, it seems like sometimes not everybody has that, that focus on special teams. No, I, I agree with that statement. I think, I think you look at special teams as a game changer, and um, we certainly look at it that way. And so it changes games. And... The importance of it, the pride that goes into it, having playmakers on offense and defense on um, uh, in it. I think the coach's devotion to it. I think the study of it. Um, and then, you know, for me, just the constant preaching of how important it is and um, getting good versus good work throughout the week. And so that uh, the speed and the tempo is there when um, – when the ball's kicked off on Saturday. But I think special teams, you know, just being in games, so as much as um, we want to score and as much as we want to score a lot and put points on the board, right, some of my favorite games are the low-scoring games where the field position is so critical, where, hey, if we get the three and out here and we pin them deep, right, and then offense gets the ball at this yard line and we can matriculate the ball down and we can get them in position to make this kick, right? And then we can pin them deep again and go three and out. And those things, just winning games like that when, when you're, you're facing a really strong adversary and the special teams comes out on top, th those are really rewarding. And we're building, um, building our team to win those types of games. As far as Jalen Petrie, did you know his story when you arrived that he was a commit? and he remained the commit. And what does that say about him now that he's also blossoming as a player? It says a lot. He's, he's um, you know, I'm, I'm very excited about Jalen. I'm very, um, you know, when I hear more about him, just, hey, Jalen in practice did this, or Jalen in a meeting, right, said that. I think um, I, I learn how he sees the game, and I learn his values. And I want to learn more, you know. And so for, for Jalen to be out in front of our team and our defense, I think speaks to um, the values that our defense holds. And so to get him out in front more and to put him in a position to be successful, I think as coaches, you know, Jalen makes it easy on us. Go to Chuck Carlton. Dave, you don't open until the 12th, but there are some FBS games this weekend. I was just curious, do you kind of monitor those or a little bit just to see what the new normal is, things 
situations that might come up with because of everything going on, maybe even reach out to co other coaches you might know who are playing this weekend and that sort of thing. Cause everything seems just a little different right now. It's a good point. Yeah. I plan on doing that. And so was able to watch, um, you know, the, the game, um, here just recently that was on TV and, you know, it's, I feel like, um, you know, you're watching that thing as, oh, are there masks on, right? Are they distanced? And it's just, you're so, you're so used to that. And so you can't help, but, uh, you can't help but think that when you're watching, when you're watching those things, it was really cool to see just how much fun they were having and the coaches and the players. And it was, it was just great to see football again, you know, but it, it does look different. And so I was, I was aiming to do that was to, to call around and kind of get um, some of these guys are playing their take of how it went and if they were to do it again, what they would do. Cause it, it is, it is new and, um, for us to be on the same page that way, I think, is 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 well needed. Go to Matt Roberts next. Yeah, Coach, just curious. Obviously, it's been a weird off season, and, and since you took over here, but has it has it maybe accelerated your ability to connect with the players throughout, whether it's meetings this off season or, or meetings like this last week about football and otherwise? Has it allowed you to really kind of get to know them better than you maybe would normally? I agree with that. Um, that's, that's, it's very good and very insightful. You know, I think, um, it has, I think, you know, just football in general, um, you know, there's, um, we were talking about this as a staff earlier, the, the, in the past where say, Hey, I'm gonna blow this whistle and guys are running here and running there or in the past where, Hey, we're going to do this and it better look like this. I just feel like that's not necessarily my personality anyways, but I think just whether it's COVID-19 or whether it's, it's um, you know, striving to get social, social um, justice, I think the, you look at those things and there's a lot of, of, of questions. There's a lot of listening. There's a lot of listening to understand. Um, there's, um, I think, all of those things are appreciating the person over the player. And um, I can't remember a season, particularly just for me, speaking for me, wherever that's been the case more than this one. And so I appreciate that. And I appreciate our players' openness and um, their, um, their willingness to, to let me in and our coaches in. And so I think just the when you – when you get to understand, and I think of this as coaches too, I think the person over the coach, the person over the player, I think a lot of times as coaches, you don't, re you don't recognize or see that until you're fired, until you're out of a job and your identity was, on, was coach, coach this, coach that, and then you're struggling to find the person that, that um, you'd like to be or at one time you were. So the identity piece, and, and getting to know our people and investing in that has been has been much accelerated because of uh, you know the time that we're in, and so I appreciate that. Thanks, Max. Go to Max Olson next. Hey, Coach. Um, I know the, the issue of the, the conference policy for postponing games is kind of a complicated issue. I'm just just curious since they've asked for the coaches' feedback. What's your sense of, of where you hope that ends up? And I guess what's the minimum uh, number of players, scholarship players you would need active to, to feel like you can play a game? Yeah, it's an interesting question. I think the talks that we've had, it's very, I think there's been, there's been a bit of a, a break and I, I don't know if there's been a, a resolution yet. I think it's, that's still being worked out. I know that for me, it would come down to the big people, the O-line and the D-line. That, that if you get to a point where your, your O-line is down or your D-line is down, there's not a bunch, O-line more particularly, there's not a bunch of body types that you could put into that, that position and play effectively. Defensive line, like for us, there's packages where we can play with two D-linemen. We could play with one D-lineman at times. And there's things, depending upon the offensive structure, there's things that you could do. Um, you know, with that being said, if that's the baseline, then, then what you're looking is like say it's say it's offensively, 
let's say it's 11 personnel, so there's one back, there's uh, one tight end, there's three receivers, and you have certain offensive plays, and there's certain um, there's a certain system that you run. Typically, right in 2019, anyways, you'd have 11 personnel package and plays. You've got 20 personnel package and plays, and that's you know there's two backs, no tight ends, right? Um, three receivers, and you're doing something there. And maybe there's 10 personnel package and plays. So there's one back, no tight ends, four receivers, and each of those would be different plays per those personnel packages. So, hey, this kid's coming in. We're going to get the ball to him. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. I think, in my, my view of it, COVID-19 changes that. And so now it's like, hey, we've got these different personnel systems, but somewhere there's a baseline of, hey, these are our plays. And regardless of who we've got in the game, we can run these plays, right? And so it's not this personnel equals that, this personnel equals that. It's like, hey, here's these plays. And if and if we've got tight ends, we can be in 12 personnel. If we don't, we've, we're in 10 personnel and, and so on and so forth. And so whatever we need to, we can put people out there and effectively play. And then defensively, say, hey, we want to be a nickel and we want to use the star. But if we don't, now we got a linebacker. I would think like that. I think that that is not necessarily the thinking of scholarship players. Um, and so there's some others that, that maybe don't think like that. And so it's, it'll be interesting to see where that lands. Yeah, any idea when you guys get some sort of answer on that? No, sir. Okay, thanks. All right. Thank you, everybody. Appreciate uh, y'all's time. We'll see y'all uh, next Monday.